So today we are talking about biceps hypertrophy training. And let's start off with the measurements. So this year, beginning 2023, as you can see, I did measure them cold, flexed at 40 centimeters. Now, if we are talking about my training history, in the past two years, I was doing full body three times per week. So the biceps I did in my first program, total hard sets per week, only three. And then I improved my full body program a bit and I managed to get up to six hard sets per week. So yeah, that was a big problem because biceps are of very high importance for me right now. So my current program looks like follows. It's a 60 upper lower split and on the upper days I'm doing biceps. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday are my upper days and I'm doing here an easy bar curl standing and then I am doing a one arm cable curl where the elbow is behind my body. So I'm doing each workout six hard sets. So three I'm doing for the easy bar curl and after that three for the one arm curl. So that's a total six times three. That gives me a weekly volume of 18 hard sets and I'm doing them in a superset fashion with triceps. So I'm doing a bicep tricep superset which is pretty standard in hypertrophy training. And the rep range is from 10 to 15. And now I will get to the specific details when it comes down to bicep training. As I did mention, biceps are of a very high importance for me. That's why the frequency is three times per week and the volume is that high, 18 hard sets per week. If you are only beginning, I don't recommend to you running this high volume scale down to like nine and then maybe work your way up to 12 hard sets per week, but don't go as high as I do because it's not for beginners. Regarding the rep range, I like to keep it a little bit higher, 10 to 15, but eight to 12 works also fine. And this is the most important part of the video. Listen very closely to this. I used to make this mistake many, many years in terms of compound lifts versus isolation lifts. Many people regard that when you are training your back, for example, like I do, I do chin-ups and I do a dumbbell row and they count it like a full set for the biceps or a half set. No, unfortunately, it's zero. Zero sets for the biceps in those lifts. That's a shocking conclusion that I did find out. So yeah, these don't count as working sets for your biceps because the limiting factor is not your bicep, it's your back muscles. And the bicep will be not worked through a full range of motion and it will be very far off when it comes down to proximity of failure. If we are talking about triceps training where you are doing the bench press, the overhead press, yeah, it works the triceps a little bit more. You maybe could debate there to count the sets a little bit for the triceps, like 0.5, maybe half a set. But when it comes down to biceps, it's close to zero. I have decent arms, yeah, but they could be much more better after a decade in into this lifting game. So yeah, that's a harsh reality, harsh pill that I had to swallow. So when it comes down to isolation lifts, you must isolate the biceps here. And there's no other way around it compound lifts will be just not enough. Hence, you see the weekly volume is 18 sets. When it comes down to the weekly sets, bicep compared to tricep, I think for biceps, you must go on the higher side. But when I am setting up my superset, it would be kind of waste to perform for the triceps less. So that's why you see 18 sets for both. When it comes down to the exercise selection, I recommend that you incorporate one standard curl with the barbell. So I'm doing it with the easy bar or you can do it with a straight bar. If you find it gives you not pain on wrist and the elbow here. The thing is when you are performing the curl, the bicep works best when the palm is supinated here, completely supinated. The easy bar works in a semi supinated position. So it's still good. But if you do some hammer curl like this, or even a reverse curl like this, the biceps are not work here. It's more brachioradialis here on the forearm and the brachialis muscle here in between. So first movement should be very standard. 
uh, barbell bicep curl, for example, easy bar, straight bar, or with dumbbells. Then when it comes down to the other movements, I like to have a movement where the bicep is put in a stretch position, so elbows behind my body, and I'm doing here with the cable, the curl, you could do it in an incline with the dumbbells. I did hear some mixed opinions on the incline dumbbell curl, so I stick to cable here. And there are a lot of movements. So you could do the easy bar on the preacher, but I remember this video floating on the internet around where the guy tears both his bicep tendons. So yeah, I still have the preacher in my closet, but I think the important part is not going to the very bottom here and also having a very steep preacher so the bicep tendon gets not put under a lot of pressure there. You could also do the cable curl with two arms, the pinwheel curl, also the spider curl. So we have a lot of movements here to choose from. So experiment which movement do you find best and then stick to it. Pick one to two movements and that's enough for the bicep. And as I did mention you, the standard superset will be bicep and tricep. And it's not a fatiguing lift. That's why I can work up to high volumes and also high frequency. But yeah, start slowly and then build up gradually. So this is it. That's how I'm programming my bicep string right now. The next video you can watch this. Here I'm explaining all the maximum hypertrophy series, how I'm setting everything up. So I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. See you soon next time. Bye.